Hello, and welcome to the Invent with Scratch screencast. I'm Al Swigert, and in this screencast, we're going to create a small demo of a catworm creature. So you can see, the cat just follows the mouse cursor as I move it around, and all of the body segments move around individually, just like a weird little caterpillar creature. We can also change the speed that this cat monster moves around to be super fast or set it down somewhere to be really slow. And so this monster is a pretty good character to have in your programs too. You can make you can make this the uh, boss monster that you have to fight or maybe the player controls this monster and has to roam around eating things off the board and gets longer and longer as more segments get added. Let's go ahead and see how this is put together. Click on create to start up the scratch editor. So the first thing we're going to do is edit this sprite. Let's go to the costumes category. We don't need this second costume. Go ahead and delete that. And so with the reshape arrow selected, go ahead and click on individual parts of the body. Don't actually select any of the head parts, but select the body parts and press the delete key to make them disappear. And be sure you don't miss the white patches for the tail and the chest of the cat. Alright, now we just have this weird looking cat head that's smiling at us. Just kind of floating around there. I think I had a dream like that once. Anyway, this will be the cat head. So we'll just rename this sprite to be cat head. And the code for this is pretty simple. We just want to have the cat follow the mouse cursor around. But first we'll create a new variable from the orange data section. Click on make a variable and we'll call this variable speed. And this will control how fast the cat moves around. And go ahead and double click on this until we get that slider view so that we can control it just by sliding this up and down. We can start the speed off at something like maybe about 11. That seems good. So in the brown events section, grab this when green flag clicked block. I'll enlarge it so that it's easier to read. And go to the orange control section and grab this forever loop. Now what we want this cat to do is point towards the mouse cursor and then move a few steps towards it. So go to the dark blue motion category and grab this point towards block. We'll just set it right inside that forever loop. And click on the black triangle so that we can set it to mouse pointer. Now I'll grab this move 10 steps block and we don't always want it to just move 10 steps, we want it to move however many steps speed is currently set to. So go to the orange data section and grab that speed variable and put it into place right inside that move block. So if we click on the green flag to test what we have so far, yeah, that's really nightmarish actually, having that cat head chase you around. So let's start adding some body parts. We'll just go ahead and click on paint a new sprite and I'll do this in vector mode. Grab the ellipse tool, draw a filled in black circle. That's something like this. We'll make it more oblong going up and down. And then on top of that, I'll draw another ellipse. That looks something like this. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Now I'll select the line tool and draw a little spike that'll come out the top. Be sure to complete the entire triangle, that way we can select the fill tool and fill it in. Now I'll select the entire spike and put it say right there and send it back a few layers so that's behind the rest of that oval. Okay, well this entire thing is kind of big when we compare it to the size of the head, so let's shrink it down. I'm going to select the entire sprite and then just shrink it down a little bit. Maybe that big? Well, that's a little too small. Well, maybe let's make it a little bit wider. That's pretty good. And I'll set the center a little bit below the center of the oval, maybe right about there. Let's see where the cat head, the center of the sprite, can be right about there, 
where its cheek is. So we'll rename this sprite to be body1. And the only thing that this body segment will do is follow around the head whenever the head starts moving around. So go back to the cat heads script section and let's broadcast a message. We'll just say broadcast and we'll say this message is called body move. So this message is what tells the body segment sprite to move towards the head. So the head is going to be chasing the mouse pointer and body one will be chasing the head. So select this when I receive body move block and then just like what we had for the head code, we're going to have point towards and move and we'll point towards the cat head and we'll move speed steps towards it. So let's test this out. Click on the green flag. Now that's kind of okay, but now the body is overlapping the head. So we should add a little condition here. We only want the body to move towards the head if it's not already touching the head. So go to the orange control section and grab an if block. We'll put that code inside the if block. And the condition will be if it's not touching the head. So we can get this touching head from the light blue sensing category, but in order to have the opposite of this, we'll need to go to the green operator section and grab this not block. We can put that inside there, and then that inside the if block. So now, if this body segment is not touching the cat head, then it'll point towards the cat head and move towards it. So that way, you can see the body segment isn't moving at all because it's touching the cat head. But as soon as the cat head gets far enough away, that's when the body segment will start following the cat head around. And so at this point, we can just duplicate the body segments and make as many of them as we want. That's a lot of body segments. They're all over the place, but as the program runs, they'll f all fall into line. Oh, actually, they all have the exact same code as that first body segment, so they're all following the head. We'll have body one follow the cat head, but body two will follow body one. And body three will follow body two. And so on for all of the body segments. Perfect, that's great. All right, we can change the speed to whatever we want it to be. Have it go really fast. Or have it just go at a nice slow pace. We can also decorate each individual body segment so that's slightly different from all the others. Let's add just some dark spots to these. Maybe just a big spot there. And body two will have a couple spots. Maybe body three will have a horizontal flat spot. Body four will have no spots. And for the final body section, let's get rid of this oval altogether. Let's just have a spiky tail as the final part of it. So I'll rotate this around like that. I can make it kind of a spiky tail looking thing. And so that's our giant cat worm creation. I, uh, I really have no idea how I came up with the idea for a giant cat worm program in Scratch. I, I have some weird thoughts sometimes. 
Anyway, so you can see there's actually very little code in this program. It's just this one broadcast that the body parts handle. And then the cat head just points itself towards the mouse pointer and heads towards it while broadcasting that body move message. And all of the segments just sort of start working out. There's this emergent behavior that comes about with this really cool individual segments, even though the code itself is pretty simple. And so having this would be a really nice character to add to your own programs if you just need like a random weird wormy dragon monster that eh, just happens to have a giant cat head. In fact, we could make this have a giant cat head just by increasing the size of it. Whoa. That looks really... I do come up with some weird ideas sometimes. Anyway, that's it for this screencast. I hope you found it really helpful, and you can find more screencasts at inventwithscratch.com. Thanks for watching.